Ah, uh, man, I feel like I am always so late to this party, and it sucks that I am having to start off a video like this again in just the past two weeks. Wait, actually, on a side note, that is still definitely related. I don't know if you guys' algorithm has been picking up that Transformers 1 Stan account on Twitter. Hilarious account, and he or she is really doing the Lord's work. Or I guess in this case, Paramount Plus's work? Paramount's work? Hasbro's work? I don't know. Just a bunch of blokes over there. Go watch Transformers 1 before it is no longer in theaters anymore. It was genuinely a good movie with incredible voice acting and a movie that actually had visually appealing VFX shots and CGI unlike... Holy God, what are you showing me? His head. Come on! Open your eyes! Or you can always just go watch my video. But if you are familiar with the discourse surrounding Transformers 1 and its unfortunate box office letdown over the past month or so, it's become relatively obvious that not only have the studio let down the project in the first place with the damn near non-existent and subpar marketing, unfulfilling trailers, and frankly, when it all comes down to it, blatant lack of trust in either the project in its entirety or the audience that it was made for. And much like then, the cycle just continues now. What cycle am I talking about? The cycle of competently made and faithful adaptations that get no recognition as the studios helming those said projects continue to shove their heads so far up their own ass that they become comatose on their own supply. So I gotta ask, because a disservice is a disservice. Did I miss something here? Why is no one of relevance talking about Tomb Raider The Legend of Laura Croft on Netflix? For the chronically online side of the internet, sure, that makes sense. Like, I have seen some people on Twitter calling this chick Larry Croft, which is actually kind of hilarious and did get me the first time, but come on lads, get a grip. But I'm not being the crazy one here. No Jeremy Johns video, no Chris Stuckman video, if anybody really enjoys getting Stuckmanized after that whole Madam Web debacle. I mean, shit, even Grace was talking about how she couldn't even get past episode three. And this is coming from the chick that liked the Borderlands adaptation literally like two months ago. And that was genuinely a crime against creativity. Like, what the fuck is going on there? I don't think I would really care as much if this show wasn't at least kind of a decent watch, but it was. I could even say that I actually enjoyed myself from time to time until, well, we'll get to that. For a show that I would imagine was a pretty highly budgeted animated project, seeing how this was a Netflix production, starring one of the most highly marketable, recognizable, and talented actresses in the game right now in Hayley Atwell. Yes, that Hayley Atwell. An adaptation that not only checks off some of those superficial Hollywood must-haves like the quote-unquote strong female character, not to mention being a project attached to an IP that hasn't absolutely been decimated in the last half decade in this lack of creativity Hollywood era that we the audience find ourselves in. But I think most importantly, this was a show that actually attempted to deliver a moderately paced and streamlined 8 episode adventure surrounding a character that they hope you the audience already have an affinity for. And at the slight chance that you do, then congratulations, you are being catered to in my opinion, seeing how I believe most if not all of the decisions that went into this project was mostly in the cost of serving you the actual fan base, fan service if you will. And this actually isn't even sarcastic and I'm not saying that at all as a bad thing, because as a casual who has never seen a Tomb Raider movie, let alone sat down and played a Tomb Raider game, a complete noob when it comes to this franchise, this character, its world, and its rules, which will more than likely become more and more obvious throughout the entirety of this video. But a show that surprisingly serves up some incredibly animated action sequences and set pieces, not only when it comes to the hand-to-hand -hand combat and the fight sequences as a whole, but also in a sense of developing the world that these creators are trying to flesh out. What I mean by that is, again, as a normie, I wasn't familiar with the fantastical and almost magical elements that were attached to this franchise. The historical mythos and spiritual stories that made this animated world feel so unique and lived in, and for a show that was able to keep me relatively engaged throughout the majority of its runtime, until they kind of MCU'd themselves and jumped ship at the end there. Think about the ending of Shang-Chi if you even have the brain folder for that. It's kind of a shock why this show wasn't really promoted more than it was, if at all, to the mainstream audience. I made a video a couple weeks back exploring tired franchises that I felt like could be rebooted and revamped if adapted into an anime style of media, and while I didn't include this Tomb Raider show seeing how its release was already on the horizon at the time, I do want to redact my statement because this is not anime. 
My analyst kind of confirmed that when I was able to rate Terminator 0 and the Suicide Squad Isekai, but not this. And while that doesn't actually matter in terms of the merit in my own personal integrity and opinion on this video, it does beg the question of why would Netflix not have the apparent faith in an animated project such as Tomb Raider, especially when compared to the works of some of the year's most popular adult animated shows like Invincible Season 2 over on Amazon and X-Men 97 over on Disney+. Plus. Shows that while yes, some could argue is still pretty niche in regards to the overall viewing numbers, but if that was the mindset over at Netflix, then you could argue what was even the point of having this idea or creating the show in the first place, because if Hollywood got real with itself for once in their life, they'll realize that it's not like the Tomb Raider franchise, the demand of this IP, or the character of Laura Croft, are really living in the Hollywood glory right now like, say, the Sonic franchise is. I'm honestly not quite sure if there's demand at all for this IP. That's why I believe it is even more frustrating as an audience member that more care wasn't taken to show the masses the hard work and effort that was thrown into this project. I've been yapping, so we gotta go ahead and talk about this plot. I'm gonna be real light with it because, one, this show was actually pretty solid, even though at some points I barely really knew what was going on because I'm not familiar with this world's magical and spiritual elements, but also Haley Atwell in her charming British voice. Anyway. Tomb Raider The Legend of Laura Croft follows the origin story of the iconic character three years into her prime adventuring after a mission gone wrong that left Laura on her own after the death of her father figure Roth. With Lara unable to let go of the past, Lara is stricken not only with the grief of losing a close friend, but having to manage the weight of a death that is implied to be her fault from her colleagues, even though that plotline and character that accused her of that isn't really brought up again, which is pretty annoying. Again, with Lara unable to let go of her past, she decides to auction off her treasures and most favorite booty over her time of adventuring in order to usher out the memories that come with them. Just get better help, Lara. Don't worry, this is not a sponsor break. When Lara's most treasured memory slash treasure is stolen from the auction, a green box containing a time stone lookalike with four other sister infinity stones, Lara's story begins as a game of cat and mouse ensues in order to track down the thief, uncover their motivations, and collect the stones before chaos is unleashed. But will Lara have the strength to handle this adventure all on her own? Will she be able to conjure not only the physical strength to battle spiritual entities, magical beasts, and the classic henchmen that block her path, but the mental strength to overcome what she has lost and the acceptance of what cannot be changed or crack under the overwhelming pressure of grief and the temptation of revenge. Like I said, I'm not really sure where we, we as in Netflix, went wrong here. For those people who have seen the show, besides the MCU-like ending, which even I could still be in the minority opinion about, and I guess some relatively middle of the pack plot lines being dropped like Woody out of the story as a whole like Lara's blame in the Roth death or Lara's father but I guess those are obviously aspects of the show that you could just touch on in a possible season two so it just keeps going back to the fact that I don't really see the reason of not promoting and marketing Tomb Raider to the masses. For a show where you could actually brag about the quality of your animation, had incredibly tight and action-packed action sequences, streamlined pacing with a digestible narrative, a colorful, beautiful, and mysterious world, and one of the most recognizable and iconic female action heroes to grace the entertainment landscape, it did Netflix no benefit to not market this show. And it definitely did not do this franchise or this IP any justice. So in a ranking tier list that is still a name in progress, as I mentioned before, as someone who has never consumed any piece of media from this IP or this character, unless her Fortnite skin counts, <laughs> yeah. I definitely saw the vision of this new iteration and addition to this franchise, and Haley Atwell's performance was just absolutely spectacular. But our villain changing into a dumbass griffin at the end just really gave me the vibes of Marvel's Shang-Chi's ending, still gives me chills to this very day. But this was still definitely an A for effort show, and if Netflix were to actually come out with a season two, I would watch, surprisingly. Of course, as always, I wanna thank you guys for watching the video, and if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I'll leave a link to my Twitter and letterbox in the description, just in case you guys wanna go check that out. Again, I wanna thank you for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you did enjoy, why not click on more while you're at it? Otherwise, that is all the words I got for you today.